Hello everyone, my name is Alistair Shepard. I'm going to give you a short overview of my other second module I'm teaching in semester two next year, which is on terrorism and counterterrorism, policing, intelligence and war. This is a module that fits in with my wider teaching areas in, in security studies, um, and this will be the second time that this module uh, has run. Yesterday, the 19th of April, saw the 25-year anniversary of the Oklahoma bombing, one of the images on the screen at the moment. This was the worst US terror attack carried out by a US citizen. 168 people died and many, many, many others were injured. That form of terrorism, which was a white US citizen with the grievances against the federal state is not talked about as much as some of the images on the screen, 9-11, the Bataclan attacks in Paris in 2015, and others. They have dominated the terrorist literature, and particularly the media coverage in recent years. What this module seeks to provide is an in-depth introduction to the phenomenon of political violence known as terrorism. It looks at terrorism and counter-terrorism, because it seems to appear everywhere. Although obviously today we're currently dominated by the global pandemic that is COVID-19. Terrorism and counterterrorism appears in news, books, films, TVs, clothing, cinemas and music. It's in local, national and international politics. Efforts to tackle terrorism permeate throughout our everyday life, whether that's through CCTV, train and airport security, everyday policing, different banking regulations we have to comply with, the safety in public spaces such as theatres and cinemas and shopping malls, sports events. All these notions of security have permeated into the very everyday existence, particularly of the Western developed world. Yet we very rarely notice or debate the influence of this on our everyday activities. So it's important to try and understand how terrorism becomes such a high profile phenomena and what the implications are for politics and international relations. We try and understand in what ways terrorism as a form of violence is different from other forms of violence in politics and IR, such as war, insurgency, repression, murder, torture, and other forms of political violence. The module is roughly divided into two, very crudely speaking. The first half covers notions, concepts, and examples or, or case studies and themes around terrorism itself. And the second half looks at particularly efforts to tackle terrorism under the rubric of counter-terrorism. So the first part of the module really focuses on discussing the key concepts such as terrorism, radicalization and security and link that to the academic study of international relations and within that the subfield of terrorist studies and terrorism studies. It applies these concepts to in-depth historical and contemporary case studies and empirical examples. What we're seeking to do in part in this first part of it, as well as giving you some conceptual and definitional frameworks, because there's no agreed singular understanding of what we might think of as terrorism, but it does seek to provide an overview and analysis of these kind of alternative and competing conceptualizations of terrorism and also to provide you with some overview and analysis of some of the main terrorist actors or people who have been labelled terrorist actors. And indeed, we discuss that labelling phenomenon within the module as well. So what you see here in terms of the, the wordle on the screen is all the kind of related words linked to terrorism, danger, fear, religion, military, ethics, policies, politics, weapons. You also see this American developed uh, traffic light system of the threat assessment that countries make of terrorism to uh, their national security from very low risk to the most severe threats. We we'll look at this across a range of different eras from the present day back to um, at least 
uh, during the, the, the Cold War in the 1960s and 1970s, but also look at some of the real historical origins of around these understandings of what terrorism might actually be. So the module as a whole has eight, 18 lectures in them, uh, one hour, twice a week. Um, and in part one of this module, as I just kind of outlined, we'll look in detail at some of the definitions and the concepts and the challenges of those definitions and concepts of trying to understand what terrorism is. We'll have a look at what's been called the traditional or the orthodox approach to terrorism studies, particularly built around uh, US studies of, of terrorism and one or two other institutions around the world. And then we'll kind of explore alternative ways of thinking about terrorism. And this became known as a, as a kind of um, an area or a school of critical terrorism studies, which tries to critique the orthodox traditional views and raise significant political and ethical and social questions around their understanding of terrorism. And therefore, which links to the second part of the module, how you then respond to and tackle terrorism. The first part then moves on to trying to have, after the con conceptual definitions, trying to have a at least a, a window into some kind of understandings around psychological explanations of terrorism. What might drive people to commit terrorist acts? And this links in late, later in this first part of the, of the module to notions around radicalization and so-called lone wolf terrorist attacks. The module looks at various strategies and technologies and tactics that, that terrorist organizations uh, use. Then we'll look at three or four different kind of categories, if you like. And they're very hard to categorize these different organizations in these different groups. But we'll broadly look at nationalist, ethno-nationalist groups that have been labeled as terrorists by various governments and international organizations. We'll look at political extremism and terrorism. So these are more kind of ideologically driven. I think politics is ideological, but less so about ethno-national ideologies, but more about political ideologies. So extreme left and extreme right wing terrorism. We'll look at the connections made, particularly in the media, but also by others, between religion and terrorism, and look at how actually this is not one of a really simple connection between the, the uh, um, Islamic and terrorism and terrorist actions coming together. We'll look at the way that other religions have clearly been dri driving various other acts that are clearly seen as terrorism. And, as, as, and we'll also look at this, as I said earlier, this notion of so-called lone wolf terrorism and try and critique that notion of a lone wolf terrorist actor. And finally, in this first half of the module, we'll look at state terrorism. Can states, do states commit terrorist atrocities? And can a state be seen as a terrorist state? The answer for many people is yes, they can. And we'll look at why they would make that argument and why others might disagree with them. The second part of the module deals with counter-terrorism or what's been labeled as counter-terrorism. So it looks at the kind of the key concepts around uh, counter-terrorism, such as um, combating uh, violent extremism, radicalization, de-radicalization. We seek to analyze the strategies, the tools, and the resources used by counter-terrorist actors. And we discuss the rationale behind these different tactics and strategies. So we look at this so-called balance between security and justice, kind of illustrated here through the scales of justice and the sword. We also look at how the kind of moral and societal fear that that's driven by terrorism through this campaign you can see here run in the run in the UK about how to tackle terrorism. We'll look at kind of military responses, obviously US drone strikes, but but even even using uh, regular airstrikes and troops on the ground. We look at the use of surveillance and CCTV and intelligence gathering. We look at the kind of various activities that were clearly in breach of international law, such as the so-called black prisons, a picture of one of which is, is it's on the screen, but also the way people were detained in Guantanamo. And we'll also look at international cooperation to tackle terrorism, both at the UN level, through the UN Terrorism Committee, Counterterrorism Committee, and also at the level of the European Union. We'll also look at how terrorism has kind of permeated into just everyday policing in the UK and, and elsewhere. So what we're trying to do is look at these different strategies and tools and resources. And we also want to provide a detailed critique 
of the implications of all these different approaches to counterterrorism. There's implications in particular for civil liberties and for human rights. So the second half of the lecture series looks along these lines. Between the first half and the second half, I'll give a lecture on how to write policy reports, and I'll come to those shortly as one of the assignments. But then we deal with a whole host of different ways of tackling terrorism, starting off with this notion of de-radicalization and how to counter so-called violent extremism, look at the connections between counter-terrorism and human rights, and human, particularly human rights violations, such as Abu Ghraib, Guantanamo Bay, um, extraordinary rendition, and the use of, use of torture. We'll look at the role of law enforcement and the way that policing has become much more proactive instead of reactive. So they're trying to profile and preempt terrorist attacks from taking place within everyday policing. And this links into the lecture on intelligence and intelligence responses to terrorism and the connections between policing and intelligence, which have grown ever more intertwined. And finally, I suppose, in terms of a resource response, we look at military responses to counterterrorism. Are military responses an appropriate tool of counterterrorism? Are those military responses actually more akin to counterinsurgency? And finally, we look at the, how international cooperation has tried to facilitate counterterrorist measures. We look particularly at the UN and the EU, which have been the two of the key players on internationally above the state level in dealing with this. And finally, we look at how and if terrorism ends. So that's kind of the, the lecture overview that covers most of the topics um, in the module. These we brought together within six different seminars held once a week. There's likely to be a reading week break um, after seminar three. So these are the kind of six seminar topics we, we cover linked to those lectures. So the seminars will all follow the lectures. So you had an introduction in the lectures and then within the seminars, I'm looking for you to kind of, uh, having based on the readings and having done the readings, I'm wanting you to question, debate, and engage with myself, with the literature, and with each other around very complex, controversial, and sometimes very emotive and, and, and heated um, issues. So what we're particularly looking for in these seminars are substantiated and reasoned and well-presented arguments rather than short snippets of some newspaper headline which may be designed explicitly to um, anger certain parts of society. So we're dealing with very important and politically very sensitive issues. So we'll look at what's, what terrorism actually is, what the strategies and, and technologies of terrorism um, are there, and we look at the kind of the various ideologies that have driven various terrorist actions. We'll then look at the slightly more, well, particularly in the literature, more recent phenomenon of radicalization, and we'll look at the different e efforts to counter terrorism. And finally, we'll talk about the ethics of counter terrorism. So, what are the ethical questions raised by the policies put in place to counter terrorism? Assessment on this module is based on an essay, which is worth 60% and is 3,000 words long, based on part one of the module. So broadly speaking on the kind of concepts and strategies and examples of terrorism um, that, we, that we cover in the module. And the second assignment is a 2000 word policy report worth 40%. This is based very much around counter-terrorism. Um, and what I'm seeking for you to do here is to write a report on one approach to counter-terrorism or to countering violent extremism. And I'm asking, but so you can choose a topic within that kind of remit you can choose who the author is in that obviously you're writing it, but I'm asking you to write it from the perspective of an employee or an expert within a number of different organizations or actors. It could be a relevant government department, it could be an international organization, it could be an NGO, or it could be a think tank. I'm also allowing you to choose who you're writing that report for, who, who the audience is. So you could be writing it directly for the head of that organization, you could be writing it for an entirely different organisation, another another country's government. If you're an NGO, you could be writing it on, on, uh, and, and addressing it to an international organisation or to um, a, a state actor. Same if you're a, um, a think tank. It could be commissioned by a country or it could be put out there for public um, consumption. So it's a very different way 
of writing and it, and it allows you to choose the topic and it's written in a way that you basically have to kind of sum up of what is the key problem, what has been done to address it, what hasn't worked, what has worked and what do you recommend for the future. But we'll talk about this through the module um, when, when, we, when we take it. And finally I'll leave you with a very short selection of a different number of different types of readings. Um, some, of the, some of these are the key people in, in the field. So people like Martha Crenshaw, Richard English, Bruce Hoffman, Richard Jackson and others um, have all taken uh, leading roles in various aspects of terrorism studies. Bruce Hoffman tends to be seen as slightly more traditional and orthodox and that's one of his most, most recent books. And then we also have here um, the critical introduction uh, to terrorism from Richard Jackson, Euron Gooding and, and others which takes a very different approach to thinking about terrorism. So I'll leave it there. If